Hi and welcome to Cubicad. This is Mazia Sharifian and I'm here to introduce you to a fantastic book written by Kip Thorne which is about the science behind the sci-fi movie Interstellar from Christopher Nolan. The book was really smooth and easy to understand. However, I made it even simpler, presenting the first chapter of the book through motion graphics. Hope you like it. It all began 13.8 billion years ago, with the Big Bang, forming our universe, which was a vast sea of ultra-hot gas after its birth. When it cooled down, eventually the gravity of the regions with the highest density pulled everything inward and formed trillions of galaxies, our Milky Way being one of them. Each galaxy consists of trillions of stars, and some of stars having planets orbiting around them forming individual solar systems of a galaxy. Our own solar system consists of eight planets orbiting around the Sun. You must have heard of Pluto, the ninth planet in our solar system, which is actually a dwarf planet. Now, what keeps our universe from falling apart? In better words, what laws are controlling our universe? So far, scientists have discovered three major laws of physics. Newtonian laws, Einstein relativistic laws, and quantum laws of physics. Almost everyone is familiar with Newtonian laws and the Apple story, but in 20th century they failed to be applied to the vast universe and to the objects with the speed of light. So Einstein relativistic laws are born. After a short period of time, Newtonian laws also fail to explain the physics in the realm of very small, the molecules, the atoms, and even smaller particles. That's when quantum laws of physics are discovered. It's interesting that you can see all of these laws are applied in interstellar movie. From relativistic laws in gravitational lensing of a black hole, to quantum laws in the blight which is destroying the crops on Earth. Now let's head to the exciting stuff and take a closer look into two important entities in Interstellar movie. A black hole and a wormhole. What are they? When a star runs out of fuel, it dies and transforms into either a white dwarf, a neutron star or a black hole. For instance, our Sun will become a white dwarf, which is almost the size of the Earth. A bigger star, however, will become a neutron star, which is the size of a city like Chicago, three times heavier than our Sun. But giant stars are destined to become black holes, a region of space which consists of no matter whatsoever, just a surface called horizon through which nothing can escape, not even light. That's why they're called black holes in the first place. How about wormhole? To explain that, we need to understand the concept of warped space-time. Consider our three-dimensional space with a fourth dimension being added, which is time. To make it simple, we turn it into a two-dimensional surface called the space-time. Or the brain, not the brain. Every mass which exists in the brain is actually bending it depending on its density. Now consider the high density of a black hole. It bends the brain so much, which as a result creates a hole in it, also known as the singularity. But wait a minute, inside exactly what it bends the brain? In a higher dimensional hyperspace called the bulk, that actually is not part of our universe. Now align two black holes in two different parts of the universe, and guess what? You've created a tunnel between far sections of our universe, also known as a wormhole. So it seems that a wormhole needs to be engineered, but black holes exist naturally in our universe. In fact, astronomers have seen compelling evidence that in the core of almost every big galaxy rests a massive black hole. Many of them are as heavy as Gargantua, the one in Interstellar movie. Now you want to know more about Gargantua? You better read the book. 
it has more sections talking about the science of interstellar which is really exciting.